In today's note, we're going to be looking at simple and compound interest. So we've already looked at simple versus compound interest um, in the last unit where we looked at how they differ, where simple interest you earn one amount um, every single year and compound interest you earn interest on top of your interest so you end up earning more in the long run. What we're going to do today is look at um, again, we're going to look at the two and we're going to look at um, a formula for compound interest so that we don't have to go through and do the table uh, method, which we had done in the past. So basically, when you in invest or borrow money, interest is a factor. Interest rates are quoted as percent per year um, or basically per annum. So you may see per annum or just PA, which just basically means per year. Right. So you're usually given interest as a rate per the per year or for the entire year, and then that gets divided down into different things. Uh, simple interest, simple interest again, is calculated only once at the end of the term. Right? So again, you're only earning it once a year. Right? So the formula we talked about, I equals PRT. So this formula we should already have in our notes in a previous lesson, where I shows the total interest earned or owing, depending on what the scenario is. P is the principal, which is the amount, the amount you are investing or borrowing. So basically it's your starting amount. R is the interest rate as a decimal, which is key. T is the time, which is in years. Right, so that's the general formula to find the interest. We also use A equals P plus I, where A is the total amount at the end of the term. P was the principal and I was the interest that we calculated using the formula I equals PRT. So again, the only reason we have this second formula is because um, I equals PRT doesn't tell us the final amount, it only tells us how much interest we earned. We have to add that to the initial to figure out what our new final amount is. So let's go through an example of that just to kind of refresh ourselves. So Sam borrows $500 from his aunt Sally. Sally charges him 4% per annum or per year. Right, we'll just put that in there. Remember, PA just means per year. How much will Sam owe her after a year and a half? So again, with any word question, what you wanna do is you wanna go back and you wanna kind of find the key information. So we have that he borrows $500. How much, actually let me use a different color here. So borrows $500 charges him 4% per year or per annum and how much and we're looking for how much will he owe so that's also good to know that's the question after a year and a half so this is simple interest so we're looking for three things or four things technically i we're looking for the p we're looking for the r and we're looking for the t right. the interest we don't know we don't know how much interest he's gonna, or his Aunt Sally is gonna charge him. So we do need to figure that out. The P or the principal is up here, so that's the $500. So that's how much he's starting with, or how much he's borrowing. The rate is right here, the 4%. 4%, but remember we have to turn that to a decimal, so divide it by 100, so 4% becomes 0 0.04. And our time is right here, year and a half, so in years, that's 1.5 years. So with this, I can use my formula for simple interest, I equals P R T, plug in our values that we know, so we know P is 500, we're multiplying by that by our rate, 0 0.04, and we're multiplying that by 1.5 years, so I get a final value of 30. So again, this is our I value, so that means therefore $30 in interest is made. So basically, because she's charging him the 4% per year, he has to pay an extra $30. This isn't how much he's going to owe her. Right? Because then we have to look at the A value. So remember, 
it, last formula a equals p plus i. So our p value, we start off with 500, so that's what we started with, plus the $30 in interest. So the final th amount is 530. So therefore, Sam will owe $530 after 1.5 years. So again, the key thing with simple interest, if we ever wanna find the total amount, we need to add our interest to our initial amount to get the total amount. So that's an example of simple interest. And let's look at another one. We're going to go through the same thing. So Fred puts $1,000 into a bank account offering 9% PA or per annum. Again, I'll put a bracket per year. How much will Fred have after 200 days? So let's again, we know simple interest. So I equals P equals R and then R and T. So we're looking for a couple things. We don't know how much interest Fred has made. There's a hundred or a thousand dollars, which is important, the 9% and the 200 days. So P is our thousand dollars. That's how much we start with or how much Fred start with, starts with. The 9% is our rate, but we have to turn it to a decimal. So divide it by a hundred and our T is in days. So 200 days. But remember, because we want it in years, we need to figure out, okay, 200 days is how many years? So we're going to take 200, divide it by 365, and we get 0 0.5, say 0 0.55, we'll round it to two decimal places. So just over half a year. So I'm going to use my formula, I equals PRT. P is 1,000 times my rate, which is 0 0.09 times 0 0.55, which is my time. And when I multiply those three numbers together, I get 49.5. So that means that Fred is going to earn $49.5 in interest. But again, the question is asking, how much will he have? So that means I need to figure out my total amount, which is A. So A was equal to P plus I. So 1,000 plus 49.5 equals $1,049.5. So therefore, Fred will have $1,049.50. So again, another example of simple interest and finding the total amount. Compound interest, and we've talked about this a bit before, compounded interest is calculated on a regular basis. And basically it's interest on top of interest. So you're earning money on the money that you've earned, or you're earning interest on top of interest. And before we get into it, we need to know some key terms because these are all different ways that interest can be compounded. So basically, they figure out how much interest you made after a certain period, add that to your to, to your new your total amount, and then you start earning interest on that new amount. So if you see something annually, that means it's one year or once a year, one time a year. Quarterly means four times a year. Daily is three hundred and sixty-five. Bi-weekly is 26, so every other week. Semi-annually is twice a year. Monthly is 12, and weekly is 52. So these are all the different compounding periods that you could see. So basically you're earning interest either once a year, like simple interest, or you're earning it quarterly, so four times a year, and so on and so on. So we've done something similar to this before, where we've broken it down into a table. So we're gonna go through an example with this. So Wilma puts $800 into a bank account offering 12% per year or per annum, compounded quarterly. How much will she have after a year? So if we go through this, interest earned, we're gonna do our I equals PRT. 
So we have the principal, which is 800, times the rate, which is 12%, but as a decimal, it's 0 0.12, and then times multiplied by the time. So we're not at a year, we're at a quarter of a year, so it's 0 0.25. So we get a new final amount, or interest earned, is $24. So that new balance, basically, so after the first quarter, the new balance in the account will say $824. So this new balance is going to be our starting value for the next quarter. So when we go through and do the same formula, I equals PRT, we start right off with instead of 800, 824, times 0 0.12, which is the rate, times 0 0.25, which is the amount of years because we're doing it in quarters. So 824 times 0.12 times 0.25, we get 24.72, so an extra $24.72. So we add this to our initial, so the 824, so now we have $848.72. This new balance carries over Again, similar to what we've done before, using that same formula, I equals PRT, we have 820, or not 824, we have $848.72 times 12% times a quarter, because it's one quarter of the year. And we get $25.46. So we're gonna take the 25.46 and add it again to that starting value, so the 848.72, and our new balance is $874.18, which is what we again, we carry over to the fourth quarter, 874.18, and we use this number in our formula, I equals PRT. So again, $874.18 times 12% as a decimal, times a quarter, because a quarter of the year. And we get $26.23 when we round it. So 874.18 plus 26.23. We get a final amount of $941. So after one year, Wilma should have $941 after one year. So that's compound interest. If we were to do it based on simple interest, it would be a little bit smaller than that because they would only be getting a certain amount um, in that one year. But here we're earning that 12%. Um, we're earning interest on top of interest. So you can see even the amount of interest earned each quarter is gone, has gone up. Uh, two, roughly $2.20 uh, from the initial. So that's how much you would have to earn after one year. Now that table or doing using that table is not very complicated, but it's very time consuming. And that's because we're using the simple interest formula for compound interest. But luckily there is a formula to help us use um, or, or to help us figure out compound interest without having to do that table. And that's where we come up with this equation. And so basically where this equation works, A equals P times one plus I to the power of N. A is the amount at the end of the question or the total amount, similar to the formula before that we used with simple interest. P is the interest rate, or sorry, no, P is the principal, so the starting amount, similar as before. I is the interest rate, but the key thing is, is the interest rate per period. And we'll look at what we, and what we mean by that is that you take your I value or the interest rate. So we'll say the rate as a decimal. And then what you do is you divide that by the number of periods. And what we mean by number of periods is what is it compounded by? So that's why we learned what those terms meant in terms of numbers is like annually, uh, weekly, bi-weekly, semi-annually, 
those terms, you'll see those terms in the question, which will tell you the number of periods. So that's why we found those numbers. And then finally, n, the number of periods. This is where we, our n is basically our, um, sorry, no, not the number of periods. It is divided by the period, but we call it the compounding number. Just so we don't get confused with the other one. So compounding number. So that compounding number came from those terms again, annually is one, semi-annually is two, and so on. And so the number of periods, we take our number of years, and we multiply that by our compound number, our compounding number. And again, we'll look at an example of that. So as we move back to Wilma, if we go back to her question, um, I believe it was $800 was our P. Our I was equal to 12%. And the compounding, and sorry, the number of years was one year. But because we, it was compounded as, or quarterly, so it's one times four, which equals four. Our percent, or 12% is not actually 12%. It's 0 0.12 divided by the number of compounding periods, which was four. So basically we're breaking that 12% over the entire year up into four different sections. And then our A value, we don't know. So if I go through and solve this, A equals 800 times one plus 0 0.03 to the power of four. We can do this on our calculator. We get $941. So it might be off slightly in terms of decimal places. That's just based on rounding. But in total, we have, again, the exact same answer. It's just a lot easier to use this than to go through and use the entire table. So let's look at another example. So Brad borrows $1,500 or $1, from a bank at 6% per year, compounded monthly. How much will Brad owe after two years? So again, some important information, the 1,500, the 6% compounded monthly, two years, and we wanna know how much will he owe. So when we're trying to fill out our A, our P, our I, and our N value, our A, we don't know. We don't know how much you'll owe at the end. We know how much he started with, which was the 1500. The I, right, the I is almost the 6%, but remember with compound interest, we have to take that number, so 0 0.06, divided by the compound number, which in this case is 12, because it's compounding monthly. So this is our compound number. So again, this is what tells us, again, it tells us the important compound number, but it also tells us that it's compound interest because it says compounded. So 0 0.06 divided by 12. So our I is actually 0 0.05. And our N is our two years multiplied by 12 because it's two years and 12 months. So that's 24 total compounding periods in total, or basically, Every month for two years, you're earning interest. So 12 months in a year times two years is 24. Now that we have our formula, we, uh, our new one, so instead of doing the table, we have 1,500 times one plus 0 0.005 to the power of 24. And this just becomes one calculation. And in the end, we should get $1,690.74. So therefore, Brad will owe $1,690.74 after two years. So the nice thing is we don't need to add the interest to this because this formula already gives us, um, it combines it for us already. So this is the total amount. We don't have to add anything or do a second equation at the end to figure out our total amount. Um, 
Taking a look at the equation, though, um, we should recognize it, does, it should look familiar, and basically the compound interest formula is just a variation of, the, of an exponential function. Right, the exponential function we looked at, the i or the y equals a x or a b to the power of x, very similar, um, except now we've just kind of changed the letters or the variables and applied it to finance. So again, simple interest versus compound interest is a little is uh, there is a difference between the two, and we have formulas for each. So again, just make sure you know how to use the compound formula for finding compound interest.